though. I've been yeah, out there. Yeah, I've been visiting all yeah, these schools. I've been trying to get uh, them to understand it. I've done the road show. I've made them watch so everything that's going on. And, uh, We've been talking about it. Come on, come on, staff. Let's come back together. Let's come back together. Come on. I know y'all been talking. and I guess he wants us to start. Come on. I mean, I know all of our schools understand that we've got to have very rigorous standards that make it relevant, and we have strong relationships and, and going on for our students to be successful. But I, I just want to make sure that we have a vision that everyone understands and that we're clear on how we're doing that. I, I mean, I think about my own personal story. Um, I uh, uh, went through elementary school just like a lot of elementary school kids. I really uh, didn't show out. I wasn't all that smart. I just kind of went on through the motions there. And uh, then we moved to Georgia. Um, and fortunately for me, I was very grounded in family values and education was critically important. And it was just never an option not to um, participate in education and finish my school. But uh, my family went through a divorce and that was a challenge for me. And, um, you know, I, we got to middle school and I started struggling. I had a hard time keeping up with uh, my work. I had a hard time staying organized and I started falling behind. And fortunately for me, uh, if it hadn't been for Mrs. B, who uh, kind of met up with me in the middle of seventh grade, uh, for some reason she was involved in my life all of a sudden. I really don't know why. Um, and I started going and seeing her on an independent basis, and she helped me develop my study skills and, and, and taught me that it's okay that I have to read things more than once and I have to take notes and rewrite my notes. And uh, she really gave me the confidence that, that I really feel like I, I needed in order to be successful and to feel like, hey, I can do this thing called school. Um, and so then I left middle school and I went to high school and I was able to, to manage all that based on what Mrs. B gave me. Um, but I really wasn't finding my way until 11th grade when Mrs. Kale, uh, I met her, and this was in psychology class, and she was amazing. She, whatever reason, saw the value in me, saw that my gifts were working directly with people and communicating with people and trying to uh, get people to understand the strengths that they have and, and just communicate with them. And, and she really set me on a path for success that I, I just feel like I, we wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in this meeting with you today if it wasn't for those two teachers. And uh, we just have to make sure that we're doing that kind of work every day for all of our kids. I, 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 I mean, Ronnie, it's... It's unfortunate that it took two teachers to do that, and it wasn't the whole system that was able to wrap around you and make that happen, happen you know? I mean, we're trying to, to make this happen across the district so that, you know, we have systems in place that are helping every kid every day. Um, you know, and as they've been out at the schools, they've been worried, you know, when we talk about personalized learning, that's what it's really at, at the core. It's not about, you know, computers being in front of kids and all that kind of stuff. I know you were mentioning well, something. first of all, thank you for sharing that, Rodney. I think uh, we've all had some teachers in our life that thankfully have kind of stepped in in situations that made a big difference in our life. But I can tell you, um, Aaron, one of my big concerns is communication issue. I, from a parent's perspective, you're causing quite a wake yeah. um, as you're going around with your, your um, I guess, your sessions on personalized learning. Uh, my two were uh, in the high school were texting me during the day That's how good. computers were going to take over <laughs> technology, um, like that. The, uh, the schools and that. Yeah, it was a good use yeah, of technology. Yeah, it was good use of technology. Uh, but that's a concern is the impression we're giving to other uh, individuals about yeah. what personalized look like. And so from their perspective anyway, they thought it was, you know, computers taking over and that they, they were going to have to change schools. So that was something that yeah. was... And technology is a small part of the work, but it's really about getting to know kids. But, you know, as I've been out there talking, two things keep coming up, right? Teachers are really worried about the rules. You know, whether the rules are ones that they know are in law or whether they're ones that they create in their own heads. And... You know, I'm hoping that we can do some things to, to make some shifts to that. I know our, our work with Charter District is kind of heading yep. in that direction. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, I, I think we can uh, help with that. There's no doubt that schools need greater uh, autonomy and flexibility to support their innovations. And uh, uh, we already have that underway. We have three schools that have charter contracts. They have broad flexibility from state regulations. And we can do the same kind of a, a contract at the system level and extend that flexibility to all of our schools. So the opportunity is there, and I, I think the time is right. Yeah. Now, the timing is better than it has been for the past five years. Uh, our financial outlook is, is greatly improved, and I know as a group and as a district, everyone's tired of the past five years of furlough days and salary freezes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, the outlook is much better going into next year. No uh, furlough days. State, yeah. <laughs> state funding's improving. It is an election year, so yeah. a little cautious yeah. there. But, uh, 
Yeah, yeah we don't worry about that. <laughs> At least we didn't get sunny cards this year. <laughs> you know, $100, vote for me. Right. Uh, There's still time. Yeah. yeah. So we are cautiously optimistic there. Yeah. Um, but our locally, our, our local tax digest is growing by 13% this year, which is great yep. after four years of 35% decrease in the digest. So shop tax local. bill went up. Yeah, yeah so yeah. everybody got their tax bill, saw an increase yeah. there. But it's good for the district <laughs> yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. and good for us. But, uh, but it is a good good timing and uh, for us to be able to provide additional resources yeah. that we haven't been able to provide in the last five years. Yeah. And you always had a dark cloud hanging over yeah, you when right. you had a report over the past couple of years <laughs> about how bad things were getting. So we're excited. We've got to get some good teachers in there. We've got about, how many are we hiring this time? About 300, 400 people yeah. this Definitely time changing. around. So it's definitely, yeah. landscape is changing, but we also need to nurture and take really good care of the staff that we have on That's board right. right now. Yeah, It's about the people. It is. I just hope that yeah. we can figure out a way to help them to understand, know. you know, help them get it and help them see what's going on. I just, I hope everybody can see it with 2020 vision. I need more time. It's too hard to concentrate. Don't tell me I'm not smart enough. Don't tell me I'm not going to pass anyway. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Look, kid, I'd like to hire you, but you just don't have the skills we're when looking for. you get for. what you want, but not what you need. I don't understand how but that there aren't any around. When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep. Do you know how frustrating it is to work on the computer? Stuck in river. Why should I care when no one else does? And the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be Because it's school and you have to, it's boring. We just sit there while the teacher talks and talks and talks. <laughs> you know what? Maybe if you took time to listen to your teacher, you'd learn the three R's. What do you mean three R's? You know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Uh, Mom, writing and arithmetic do not stop the letter R. Uh, Trey, <laughs> let's go. I wish someone would come and explain the three R's business. What is that? Is that a R? Welcome, look who's here, it's our leadership team, the John Eastler, and the Stockbridge crew, yeah, here they are, look at the ladies in pink, all right. I'm no stranger. I'm the superintendent. Are you crazy? Yes. <laughs> yes, you brought me here. <laughs> you brought me here in search of the truth. You might even call it a quest in search of the three R's. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Yes, crazy excited about this journey. So let's go off in search of the three R's together. Come on, Trey, follow me. Trey, 
They, we've even got the super simple guide, the super schools guidebook that we can follow along as we search and do this journey. Now let's find the real three R's. Here they are. Attention! First, we have rigor. Achieving reflects mastery of rigorous standards. What? Yes. <laughs> Second, we have relevance. Learning experiences are relevant and engaging. Wow. Wow. And last, we have relationships. <laughs> hey. Hey, what's up with this music? <laughs> Hey, what's up with that? Uh, they get all dark, vainery, uh, and uh, and circumstancy, and, and I get jippity. Ah, that's much better. Thank you. And where was I? Oh, yeah. Relationships are supportive and nurturing. Wow, this is totally weird and cool. We think so. We think so. <laughs> well, I still don't get it. At least the three ought to make more sense now, but I'm not sure how this can help me as a student. I know, I know. But maybe as a principal, but as somebody can help him. Can anybody do this? Can we make this happen? But go to that and watch out for the wind. I don't know how to do that. Wait! We will all begin to understand. With the help of my colleagues, we will make sense of this journey for all of us. We must trust one another and keep our minds and hearts open as we lay the foundation for the PLs. Wait a minute. Yeah. I thought it was the three R's. Three R's. Try to stay yeah. with me, kid. The three R's are the foundation for the PLs. Okay, you lost me. The PLs just means personalized learning. It means that you, the student, are the most important ingredient in this journey we call education. So hold on tight as we take you through the five learning tenets. What is that? that that just means the five principles upon which we're going to build and shape the future of Henry County Schools. You might call it our 2020 vision. Oh. Oh. What is that? That's an old lady. Not who? What is that? Oh, 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 that's a computer. That's what computers used to look like when they first came out. Let me show you what happens when the old meets with the new. Put that away, young lady! But I was taking notes, and now I'm writing my paper. You were breaking bones, and I'm a hater? <laughs> no, ma'am. That's not what I said. Uh, what? You want me dead? <laughs> no, ma'am. I was taking notes while you were talking, and then I started writing my paper while you were on your computer. Let me see that. Hmm. Ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> And lightweight. You ever tried to carry one of these things around? <laughs> well, it'll break your back. <laughs> I don't know. This technology looks a little difficult. You're a smart lady. I'm sure you can figure it out. I don't know. It's hard to learn new things after all these years. Oh, you mean like you can't teach an old dog new tricks? No, I don't preach to hogs and chicks. <laughs> Someday, every school will have technology like this and lots of other things. Wireless data systems, LMS, anything to help us go along with what we need to grow as students. We'll be able to learn how we want, the way we want. We can use Internet Explorer and Google Chrome to help us learn. Wow! Yay! You B team! Wow! Oh, sorry. Got a little carried away there. <laughs> I'm just not so sure I can adapt technology into my classroom. Well, don't worry. I'll be with you every step of the way. Really? Yeah. What do you say we get rid of this whole thing? Uh, I'm too young to die. <laughs> not you, the computer. Oh. Ready? Ready. Follow, Follow technology, technology road. road. Follow, Follow technology, technology road. road. Follow. Follow. If you could see the future as I see it, it would amaze you. Remember old cartoons like The Jetsons, where the future is out of this world? Well, that's where I want to go, beyond the realms of today. Through technology, we have the ability to shape our future and create a whole new world to come. We can improve our quality of life and actually build a global community. As students, we can inspire and invent through the power of our minds, integrated with the technology we already have available to us. Through programs in engineering and robotics and VEX teams, we already mesh technology with standard-based learning. So, can you see the many possibilities once technology is integrated into everyday classrooms? We are the next generation. 
We are the future of tomorrow. We are the hope for tomorrow. That was so cool. Like Transformers. Do you really make that robot? <laughs> yes, through the power of her mind and technology at her fingertips. Do you see yourself inventing something so clever? Can you imagine your future? Some are ahead, some are behind, some I don't even know where they are, and it's all so frustrating. I try to teach all my kids, but they're all so different. May I rest on your mat a moment? Please, come join me. You must center your being, settle your spirit, and be at one with your students. Um. I see that you search for meaning. You care about your students, but must stay in step with the standards. I tell you, there's a way you can accomplish both. Please go on, I'm listening. All right, follow me. Okay. 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 okay, wait, 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 I can't keep up. This is all so new to me. Now you understand how your students feel. <laughs> she could have had a V8. <laughs> I've got it. If I allow all of my students to work at their own pace in order to master what I'm teaching them, then we'll all be as one. We all accomplish our goals in the end. You beg that goal one more time. Sorry. Is that what you mean? What did I tell you? Sorry. <laughs> ah, you can be taught, Grasshopper. You are now as one. All right. I think that concludes our yoga session. Okay. Yeah. Can you help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, let's go run a 5K. Wait. Wait. Remember, everyone, don't pace. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was just concentrating. So, you don't believe me. Yeah, I get that a lot from people. But you don't know my world. I need these things to keep me focused in class. I get pulled in every direction from the sound of other kids' voices, the sound of someone tapping their pencil on their desk, the beep on the computer alerting the teacher of an email, or even the sound of someone chewing gum. It becomes this crazy cacophony of sound with no melodic line. It's hard enough following the teacher's voice, so when it's time to read or take a test, I just need to close out the world. Sometimes it's so hard to focus that I need more time. I need a chance to catch up. I need someone to understand my world. I can master it. I just need more time. She'll get the help she needs, right? Of course she will. That's the whole idea. Time is flexible, but learning is constant. You know, no two children are alike. They're unique in every way, so it makes sense that they learn in different ways. Many students need real-life experiences in their educational process to ensure relevant learning. There you go again. Remember, I'm a kid. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. Watch this and see if you can figure it out. Okay. All done. You want to check my answers? Sure. Hand it over. So, looks like, oh, wait, huh. 
All right, how'd I do? Uh, son, just calm down. I'll get it. Just one second. Dad, come on. I a lot of questions. Know. A lot of questions. <laughs> Dad, please, please. Well, Dad, one, one, one second. Just hold your horses. Dad, just tell me. I, I just want to know. I just, please. Well, it looks like... Yes? You passed the flying colors, son. Yes. Congratulations. I knew it, Dad. I knew it. You are looking at a whole new me. There's... Here's the key, son. Go pick us up some dinner at Publix tonight, all right? Congratulations. Dad, I don't know how to drive. I mean, I've studied for it. I just, I've never actually done it. What, what, what do you mean? You, you just took a test that says you know how to drive. You read the whole book. You answered every single question correctly. Wait, let me, let me explain it. Let me put it in a better picture for you, all right? Imagine this. My great-grandfather tried to teach my grandfather how to swim one day. And this is how he did it. He took him out to the pond. He just threw him in, and he said, son, you either swim or you drown. So good luck, all right? Hey, and when you go to the store, make sure you pick up those little chicken tenders. Those things are great. And you're going to need to pick up some Advil. Your mom is going to be ticked when she finds out you took her car, all right? So, all right? See you at dinner, all right? Are you serious? Uh, I'm being very serious. You'll do great, I promise. Just stay in the lanes, all right? See you at dinner. <laughs> zippity doo da, zippity day. Dad, are you crazy? <laughs> what a lunatic. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard a dad say. What was he thinking? It, you can't drive if you, if you don't have the experience. Exactly, Trey. You need practical experience before jumping into something. That's what service learning and internships are all about. Listen to these students. How do I develop a curriculum and teach it to a group of preschoolers that don't exist? Understand the relationship between a nurse and their patients without a hospital. How do I manage my own store if I don't know what it takes to run a business? What do I say to a child that's sad or upset? What do I say to a patient that's scared and alone? What do I say to a customer that doesn't like the products I can offer? When do I ask a child to behave or tell them to participate? When do I listen to a family member better than I do. When do I reorder products so I don't run out of stock on the shelves? Who can teach me better than a teacher with a classroom full of children? Who can teach me better than the nurses that take care of their patients every day? Who can teach me better than a store manager that works with the public? Why should we sit in a classroom? When life is happening? Right outside the school doors. That made sense. They have to actually do what it is that they're learning. <laughs> that is correct. Project-based learning engages the student, giving them a voice and choice in order to make learning relative. Like they say, you just can't talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Exactly. You see, students learn in real-life situations. Come on, come on, let's move it, move it, move it, move it! Let's go, let's go! On your toes, 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 on your toes! On your, on your toes. What's the problem, counselor? Can't keep up? Uh, no, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Drop and give me ten right now! <laughs> you, secretary in the blue dress, drop and give me twenty! No, no. Secretary, I'm an administrative assistant, and I have on a skirt. I don't care if you're the queen of Sheba. Drop and give me twenty right now! Coach, 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 coach. Wait a minute. Now, don't you think you're just being a little bit... Harsh? What did you say, Principal? I, 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 I said, I, you know, don't you think you're, you're being just a little bit harsh? Do you want a bunch of cowards working on your team? You know what? I, I want I, your I, people to be rough coach. and tough. Ruh, 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 <laughs> and tough. But coach, nobody wants to run a school with, with fear and intimidation. You know, what I think, you are not here to think you are here to listen, understand? I, I do, I do, I do. But I don't think that it takes, you know, fear and intimidation tactics to run a good school. What it takes to run a good school is that we all work together, we work collaboratively, we, we, we... <laughs> 10 laps now! <laughs> 25, let's go! Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Please. Is this the training for the... No, let's go. You're late! Ah! <laughs> that guy had a screw.
rulers. <laughs> he didn't want to listen or help them at all. How could they learn anything like that? You're exactly right. Once again, that's correct. We can't build 21st century skills without the four C's. What are those? Listen and understand. I have communication. I represent the ability to write effectively, speak persuasively, and listen deeply. I have the skills that show everyone what I know and what I can do, while inspiring others to do so as well. I have the skills that stretch across a vast expanse of silence, while showing others through visual arts, the written word, and the spoken word. I am communication. Hey, hey. Hey, what's up? I am collaboration. I represent the need for us to work side by side as a community. I'm the skill that allows colleagues and peers to work together to solve a problem. I help engage deeply with college and career and to play well with others. I am teamwork, I am common work, I am collaboration. Woo! 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 Hey! I am creativity. I am the inspiration and motivation for the joy and happiness of a full life. I am a beautiful poem, an awe-inspiring dance, a well-crafted editorial, a jamming improv, and a better way to make macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I see the world through the eyes of a kindergartner, full of wonder and possibility. I take risks and dream the undreamable. I am creativity. I am critical thinking. I am the skill needed to solve the problems that I face in the real world by transferring my knowledge and my experience. I am the ability to, to persevere and solve a hard math problem or a difficult relationship problem. I pull data from many sources together to make informed decisions and I consider the consequences of those decisions. I engage in possibility before certainty. I am critical thinking. And we are the district-wide approach to developing and measuring. Commun Collaboration. Creativity. Critical thinking. We, we are, are the Four, four C's. C's. <laughs> what is troubling you, child? Wasn't that exciting? Yeah, it was cool, but I feel like something is missing. Can you elaborate, please? I mean, it all makes sense, those are great ideas, but I, but I, don't, know what's, I don't know how students will learn from all of these. How do you know it will work? Yes, that's because we've saved the center of our support system as the students themselves. They are the most important pillar in this plan, along with parents, teachers, and support staff. They are the reason we build this house. Come sit with me and hear their stories. No one knew that she took care of four younger siblings. No one knew that by the time she got home and cooked and cleaned and put those siblings to bed, then and only then could she even think about beginning to do her homework or her studies from the day. No one knew the reason why you never received a return phone call or saw a parent at a conference was because her mother worked two jobs to support the family because the father walked out on them, leaving her, the eldest child, to be the one to take care of the family. No one knew the pressures that she and this world placed upon her to do and be better than what her current situation was because she didn't want to become another statistic. But how could she continue burning the candle at both ends? The only choice she felt she had was to drop out of school and get a job so that her may maybe her mother could get some rest at that time. She gave up her childhood and her future dreams to become the other parent, the other provider. No one knew her situation outside of the school walls. I wish, I wish I could have found out in time so that we could have gotten her some help. I never could get my kid to do his schoolwork. He complained that it was a waste of time because he already knew what they were doing. I'm bored, he would tell me. I never could convince him just how really important school was. I mean, he had to do it. He had to graduate. That kid of mine, he's crazy smart. 
didn't believe in school too much. He said he learned faster than all the other kids, and it drove him nuts to sit in a classroom and listen to the teacher explain the same thing over and over and over again, day after day. I'd tell him to just be patient. Sometimes that did not work out so well. You know, his test scores were amazing. But his classwork, not so much. He started to talk about dropping out a lot. I finally made him promise me that he'd graduate. And so he learned just enough to get by. It's really kind of sad that he never realized his full potential. That night at graduation, I wish you could have seen him. I wish you could have seen the way he looked at me. My insistence that he go kindergarten through 12, kindergarten through 12, like we've all done. He looked at me like he was kind of embarrassed that night. Maybe that was my shame for not making a better choice for him. I heard them say they didn't know why she came to school. When she came, she slept, and when she was awake, she just zoned out. It was a waste of their time and hers. She had paper and pencil. I had to stop going to the teacher's lounge because I got tired of hearing it. They didn't see the child that I saw. And yes, she was 18, but to me, she was still a child. When she came to my dance class, though, that's where she found her strength. That's where she felt her beauty. That was her comfort zone. And for anyone who watched her move so gracefully, their hearts were filled with emotion. She finally started to talk when she learned to trust me and she opened up. That's when I learned there were no parents. She slept out of her car. I don't know how an 18-year-old deals with that. I told the other teachers who had things to say about her what she was going through. We became her support system. We became the family she never knew. She wanted more than anything else in this world to graduate, not just for herself, but to prove to all of those other people that she could do it. Tears still come to my eyes today when I think about the feeling when she walked across that stage and she received her diploma. But I need help getting there. What works for one does not work for all. I learn differently from other students, so why treat me as one of many? Learn my name. Recognize my face. I'm not just another John Doe. Let me know you see me. Break down the walls that have risen around my heart. You have to treat me like a seed and nurture me until I blossom. Celebrate my accomplishments and don't give up on me even when I've given up on myself. Let me know you see me. See me as I am. I'm unique. I'm an individual. Take the time to listen instead of lecturing. Lecture me until your words are imprinted on my brain. Show me you care. Teach me. So you understand, don't you, child? Yes, I think so. If we're going to give the students the education they need, no, the education they deserve, then we truly have to know if it will work. Yes, that's correct. We, are, we must create student-centered culture around individual plans in order, built by our parents and our teachers, our counselors, and most importantly, the students themselves. We have, the, we have set the foundation from our district and the schools in order to lay the foundation for the five personalized tenants, in order to build the roof that every child will graduate, each child will graduate college and career ready. We are rigor, relevance, and relationship. Hey, those are the three R's. That's right. Trey, if you're our future, then we are truly blessed. Good morning, everyone. Please welcome our superintendent, Mr. Rodney Bowler.
our student director. And in the booth, Keith and the support crew. And last but not least, Miss Cynthia Corley. Let me just tell you, she's an amazing director. Um, just real quickly going, talking about the play, we, we uh, have been working on today for a long time, obviously, and uh, it was just critically important to us that uh, we established a way to communicate with you. Um, one, <laughs> that's definitely outside of our comfort zone, and uh, I think if you know me, you know what you just saw today was dramatically outside of my comfort zone. Um, so in our leadership team meetings, when we started talking, um, we said, how can we portray this whole thing called personalized learning in a manner that just shows different examples of what each tenant might look like, but not, not make it a cookie cutter uh, kind of approach. And so we called, and I'm going to brag on Miss Cynthia for just a minute. We called on Cynthia and asked her to come sit in that bland room with us and hear our story. And we shared with her what our vision was and what we believed personalized learning was all about. And she listened to us and she nodded and she asked some good questions and she left. And let me just tell you, 48 hours later, we had this script. She is amazing. So let's give her another big round of applause. Personalized learning to us is just how we kind of opened up. It is about rigor, relevance, and relationships. It's about the stories that I shared with you uh, through my experience uh, through the K-12 schools. I had two teachers in my life that I shared with you. And I had fun the other night. I went down and actually dug in the basement and found those, those annuals. And fortunately for me, I'm blessed to say that both of those teachers wrote something in my annuals. And I want to share that with you right now. Miss B, who I met in seventh grade, actually wrote in my eighth grade annual, and unfortunately, um, she's not pictured in this one, so I'm have losing my vision of her. But she, simple words, she just said, to a good student and a special friend, I'll miss you next year, and I know you'll do great at Sprayberry. Love, Miss B. Similarly, when I um, graduated from high school, Miss Kale, who I talked about as my 11th grade um, psychology teacher, she had these words to say for me. Dear Rodney, there simply isn't room to say everything that is in my heart. When Mr. R told me to anticipate a special student, I believed him, but I had no idea just what dimensions and depth he meant. You are a special young man, inward, earning introspect, learn, looking introspectively, hardworking, self-starter, bright, capable. I'll run out of superlatives, stay in touch, have a future filled with success, happiness, and all things because you are a deserving person. God bless you, Rodney, dear Pat Kale. Those people are important. Uh, to me, you can call them game changers. Uh, they shaped my life and got me going. I hope as you're sitting here, some people are coming to your mind uh, that were game changers uh, in your life. Uh, you can see their faces and hear their names and know, the, and know what they did for you. Uh, similarly, you might know of some folks who were game changers in a negative way, who put you down and didn't give you the support you need. And so it's our, it's our goal to fulfill our mission of ensuring success for each student by making sure that we have an educational system that knows clearly who our children are, and knows what they, what they understand and what they're about, but holds them to high rigorous standards so they can be successful uh, when they leave us and they're college and career ready. That's what this personalized learning thing is really all about. It's not about putting more computers in the hands of students and removing teachers from the equation. We have to have the human in the equation. We have to have the teacher. That is the critical uh, component that makes learning happen. And so I hope that you understand that, and I hope you realize that we're, we're heading down this path not because it's the 21st century and, and technology is taking over the world, but because we have technology that we can use and capitalize on, and we can use that as a tool to build on what we as humans can offer to our students. 
um, we're excited about where we're heading, and, and we're, just re, we're just redefining the great work that's happening. I sit up here today to say thank you to you because I assure you uh, the only reason I'm in this chair right now speaking to you is because of the great work that you're doing in your schools, the great work that you've been doing in your schools for years and years. The Board of Education had a decision to make uh, not too many months ago. Uh, they had a decision to either hire me as a superintendent or go with uh, someone from outside of Henry County. And uh, when they chose me, they, saw, they sent a clear message to me that they appreciate the work that you're doing in your buildings, that they value where we're heading as a district, and they understand that we will meet our, our mission of ensuring success for each student. If they didn't believe that, if they didn't have the confidence, they wouldn't have me in this chair today and we would be charting down potentially a different path. So I congratulate you, I thank you, I appreciate you. Y'all do amazing jobs, and all we're doing as we go forward is, con is continuing to define our work because we cannot be complacent in it. We can't sit back, it's too important. We are in a, a really good time in education and a really good time in Henry County specifically. We alluded to it a little bit earlier, but uh, let me take you back over the last 15, 16 years or so in Henry County. Uh, back 16 years ago, we hit a tremendous growth spurt, and we were opening schools left and right. And at some point in time, we were even known as the seventh fastest growing county in this nation. And that's huge. All, we're, all we were doing during that huge growth time frame was opening new schools, breaking faculties up, moving them to new buildings, hiring six, 700 teachers, bringing them into the county. And all we could really concentrate on was what we knew as far as the standards and being able to fill our teaching responsibilities and, and push through the year. But even doing that, each and every year we saw improvement and gains. Our students continued to, their test scores increased, our graduation rate increased, uh, even just doing uh, getting by, we saw marked improvement each and every year. So that's just a testament of this county. About five, six years ago, we hit a really tough economic time. Y'all are very familiar with that. And we went into a recession where we had to cut and cut and cut. And throughout all those cuts, we continued to see marked gains throughout the course of time. So now we're in a point in time, hopefully not just the governor's election, uh, how, hopefully we're now in a point in time where our economy is improving. Our local tax digest gives us that strength and confidence because we're seeing a 14% increase locally, and that tells us that's not just an election year thing. Uh, we're, we're adding an additional $20 million to our budget that hopefully will be approved on June the 9th. And you know that means for us that we now have a budget with no furlough days. We have a budget that shows a step increase for all employees. And that, and that marks a 3% raise for just about everybody. Some, some of you are more lucky and get a little more than that, but not many. Um, and we have a dedicated calendar, 177 student day calendar, but a 190 day teacher calendar that supports professional learning within the school year. Uh, I really appreciate the board for valuing this calendar. It means that we are dedicated to pulling you out of the classroom three of those days throughout the course of the school year to get you the professional learning that you need when it's relevant to the needs of your students. But on the other side of that, we're very committed to leaving you in the classroom, leaving the teachers in the classroom throughout the course of the day, throughout the course of the year, uh, and not have district-wide professional learning that pulls teachers out. We know that our kids need their teachers in their classrooms as much as possible, and so that is, that's a huge win-win for us, and I greatly appreciate the board for recognizing that, and I think we're going to see great things uh, this next school year because of it. So it's exciting times. It's very exciting times in Henry County. We are primed. We're seeing a small percentage of growth, which is always a healthy thing. We'll open Hampton High School next year. Where are you guys at, Hampton? Woo! We'll open Hampton High School, our 51st school next year. And after that, we won't open any more schools for quite some time. So that means that you get to invest in yourselves you get to invest in your schools. You get to figure out what this thing means for you and what it and looks different in one school than another, but you get to bond together and work together and be in a time for which we are um, 
we have the, the, the resources we need to be successful. That is huge. If, if you think about how, much, how many gains we had during the times of high growth and tough economic times, you can only imagine what's going to happen between now and 2020 when we have good times and strong, consistent faculties. So that is what we're calling our 2020 vision, and we're very excited about that. We're looking ahead into the future. In a few minutes, uh, when you disperse from here, you're going to go into your breakout rooms, and uh, you're going to be tasked as a leadership team to really focus on five specific questions, and those are in there. But those questions center around where are you now as far as understanding what it is you're already doing in your buildings that fall into one of those tenets or part of that personalized learning plan. You're going to ask yourself, what are things we need to work on and be real about that? You're going to also look ahead and say, where do we feel like we can really jump on board with this vision? What year do we feel as a school we'd be prepared to have some dedicated focus time? And so you're going to work through all that as a leadership team in, in just a few minutes. Uh, we are calling it a 2020 vision. We're excited about the work. And to kind of have a little fun with that and to kind of uh, get you into the whole superpower uh, process that we're all in right now, um, we're gonna, I'm going to ask for some help here, and we're going to give you out some special glasses. And uh, these, these special glasses are uh, superpower glasses. And uh, when you put them on, I'll, I'll just ask you just to just touch the sides. Don't get creative with them. Just take their glasses, and they're coming around, and put them on. And uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how these special powers really work. But they're coming out now, and as you, probably on the screen behind me, it is. The glasses have five bars in them, and each bar represents, ah, oh, somebody's finding them. All right, I'll go ahead and play the game. Each bar, each bar represents one of the learning tenets. And so as you look through these glasses, you will, it'll be like Eureka. You will see the 2020 vision. So uh, they're coming around. I want you to have some fun. We're going to put on some music while they're passed out. <laughs> 